sort of catch line or our motto is the home of champions. We want to stand whether they run for us or not. We want to try and stand and bring to market the best possible two and three year olds uh, there are. So I think very early on, uh, Epicenter himself was was on our radar. He was a stakes winning two year old, and he was by not, not this time. Um, if you look down our, our stallion roster, we don't have um, a son of giants causeway. He was champion sire here for for three years. Uh, during a stellar career, he was born here, a horse that we've huge affection for. We were never lucky enough to get a direct son of his, but I think we found a, a pretty good grandson. If you look at the, the, the three Triple Crown races, they were won by three different and very accomplished horses. Rich Strike was the Kentucky Derby winner. The Preakness was won by Early Voting. The Belmont was won by, by Mo Donegal. Um, so it was a very while a good crop, it was a very open crop. There was no horse that was really had really dominated. And I think in his performance, in not only in the Jim Dandy but also in the Travers, um, Epicenter proved that through the body of work from very early on in February, winning the Risen Star, to August winning the Travers, he, he did very very little wrong. He turned up at every single battle and uh, and acquitted himself very well. And obviously, his crowning moment was was in Saratoga winning a arguably the, the most emblematic three-year-old race there is. The emotions of the Breeders' Cup Classic are probably like un, unlike any, any race that we've ever really watched. I mean, you had the elation of seeing a horse as great as Flightline go on and, and prove himself to be the best older horse uh, on that day. To do it in front of the crowd at Keeneland was, was spectacular. I mean, he was a spectacular racehorse, take nothing away from him, but then as is often the case in horse racing, you've got the highest of the highs, but you've got the lowest of the lows. And seeing Epicenter uh, pull up, Joel Rosario probably saved the horse's life. He, he did a magnificent job uh, pulling the horse, so realizing something was wrong initially and pulling him up as quickly as possible and holding him stable uh, to allow the horse get onto, uh, onto the ambulance. He, he had surgery after that um, and, you know, he, he handled it incredibly well. You know, he, we must give a lot of credit to the vets who looked after him, to Becky Maker who rehabbed him after his, uh, after his surgery. He got here uh, and wasn't seen by any breeders until early February. Uh, he had 60 days almost with Becky before he came here um, and he didn't miss a beat. He must have an amazing uh, mental constitution, mental fortitude because he went from being at the top level of fitness to not being able to be let out. I mean, he, was, he went from being running, running the race of his life almost to getting hurt, to having surgery. He, he almost has a sixth sense. He knew that the people were there to, to take care of him and, and I knew he obviously was, was in a bit of pain, but he, uh, he got through it very, very well um, and handled his recovery um, in, a, in, a, in a great way. The, you know, the easiest way to sell the horse is that he almost had a full book without anybody even seeing him. He was fully booked before the season even started. But I think when people saw him, they were even more excited to breed to him, or even more excited to know that they had a mare in Fulton because he's exceptionally good looking. We had five first season stallions last year, um, all five very different in, in many ways. You know, with turf sprinters, dirt sprinters, and a classic horse like, uh, like Epicenter. Different bloodlines, different pedigrees, but this horse arguably is the best looking of the five. He's got an incredible uh, body of work behind him. Very, very good looking horse. Six, stands almost 16-2. Very correct, as I said, a great demeanor. He's a very intelligent horse, very balanced, great hip and shoulder on him. And I think if he gets foals that, that look like him, I'd say the future is pretty bright for, for uh, the Giants Causeway line to continue.